I remember some of my first work with sea turtles. It was in far eastern Indonesia in Rajampat, in a place called the Masul Marine Reserve. In 2006, this area was just now being established as a protected zone. And for two weeks, I dived these waters and explored the reefs. One of the things that I noticed was the turtles were rare because these animals had been hunted to near extinction in the region. And when I came across them, they were incredibly fearful. If you would come within 10 meters of a turtle, it would panic and it would swim off into the blue as fast as it can. Now fast forward 15 years. We have this beautiful lagoon right in front of Masul Resort. And it has sea grasses spread out in the beautiful white sands. When you swim into this little lagoon, you come across maybe a dozen beautiful green sea turtles with these marvelously red colored shells. They're moving along, almost like little combines along the bottom of the ocean, recycling all that little substrate. They'll go up to the surface, they'll take a couple of breaths, and then they float back down to the bottom and immediately they set upon the sea grasses. And all you see is these heads ripping out the sand. And it's quite a sight to see because sometimes you'll see more than one turtle come into the same area. And as gentle as they are, they can also get a little bit territorial. But what's even more important from that experience is what you see when you look in the eye of this animal. No longer do you see fear and hesitation, but you see complete acceptance. This animal now recognizes that it's safe in this reserve. The hawksbills, instead of chewing on the sea grasses, they set to work on the reef. As a filmmaker, one of our number one tenants is we don't do any damage to a reef. Hawksbills don't care. <laughs> they come crashing in and, and you'll see this beautiful red soft coral towering out of this crevice. And you're like, wow, look at that. And then suddenly you see this bill just munch on it and it starts ripping it out. But you realize they're part of the system. And unlike humans, which take massive swatches, they're taking out some of the older areas of corals where then new corals will grow up and replenish. They're ensuring that the substrate is being renewed and that it doesn't get too dense in one spot and not replenished in another spot. And to be able to witness that is, it's quite a spectacle. There's a variety of really unique phases in the life cycle of a sea turtle. Mating, for example, happens out in the open ocean. What it looks like when you're on the surface, two heads sticking around the water. And then eventually, if you get close, you'll see it's a male right on top of that female, bobbing along, doing their thing right in the middle of the water. When a female is ready to lay her eggs, typically she returns to the very beach where she was actually born. The reproductive rate combined with the survival rate is so low that it takes an extraordinary number of turtles to ever add up to that one beautiful sea turtle that you see drifting across that reef. Probably more than just about any other marine species, sea turtles really speak to the vulnerability of the creatures that call the ocean their home. And so when I'm underwater in that lagoon with that beautiful green turtle, and I'm resting on the bottom, motionless, and she comes right up to me and she puts her little eye against my mask. There's such a profound message, which is, please don't forget how vulnerable we are. We have it within our hands to renew sea turtle populations across the oceans. 
We have to change our behaviors. We have to protect their homes. And we have to say enough is enough. These animals are so vulnerable and so important to the ecosystem. We need to stand up for them and protect them.